Easy people, welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. Um, just thought I'd do a quick video. Uh, first of all, I'm going to touch on the Crystal Palace uh, game this weekend. Um, and then obviously we've got the Champions League Leipzig game tomorrow. So just thought I'd give you a few of my thoughts. Um, for those of you that follow me on Instagram, uh, will realise that I didn't go to the Palace game at weekend. Uh, I had to take the misses away after the six six away games in 24 days. You know, uh, I thought it'd be only right that I sacrificed one of these away games and, and, and nipped over to Barcelona for the weekend. Um, Crystal Palace is not a favourite away ground of mine. Uh, nothing against Palace themselves as a team. I just think it's the arse end of London. Nightmare to get there shit seats, just one of them away games that you don't enjoy. So for me, it was a win-win. So um, I headed out to Barcelona, got me head a little bit burnt in the meantime, but parked myself up in a nice Irish bar in, in the Barcelona, uh, just off of the Ramblers there. Met a couple of City fans off Instagram that live in Barcelona. Big up to you guys, you know who you are. And um, yeah, settled down to watch the game. I mean... Going into the game, Crystal Palace, I think Crystal Palace have upset many a title charge over the years. can remember them doing it to Liverpool a few times. Um, it's not a place you really want to go. You're not a place you really want to go. But we had to get out of the way. Um, sat down, team selection comes out. Uh, biggest shock, really, was Johnny Stones. The King of the North was back at right back. Uh, and Kevin De Bruyne was on the bench. Um, yeah, it was good to see Stones back in the team. Um, whether he's a right back, in my opinion, I don't think he is. Um, Kyle Walker with his off field antics this week obviously he's had his wrists slapped, so I think it was more of a statement. I don't think Rico was ready for Palace in that inverted role, so I think Stones just came in there and showed it up. Um, Akanji and Diaz. At the back, got no problem with that. I think Ruben Diaz coming back has been a massive, massive, massive um, influence on what we're about now. Captain, leader, mentality, we've said it. You know, him and Akanji are doing well. I think Akanji's not put a foot wrong for 15 million quid. You know, um, people were wondering whether he was just going to be here and there. But look, Pep likes him. I think Ruben brings the best out of him. You could see before the game a little huddle between the players. Ruben Diaz was the one in the middle, barking out the orders, telling everybody what to do. And Kevin De Bruyne, yeah, you never want to see Kev on the bench. But uh, whether, you know, he was carrying a knock, he was a bit tired, we don't know. We've got Leipzig coming up tomorrow. Obviously, Champions League very important. So he went with Bernardo, Gundogan and um, Rodri. So listen, first half, game starts as always, you know what I mean? Man City are turning the screw. We're getting a lot of possession. We're huffing and puffing. Um, Palace are, are hanging back deep. They're waiting for the counter-attack. We know how dangerous they are. You know, uh, Elise and uh, Zaha on the break. Um, they can open anyone up. So we had to be really, really careful that we didn't go gung-ho, start to, to go too high up the pitch and get caught out. Um, we had a we had you know majority of the ball. We had a majority of the ball. Grealish again uh, doing what he does, bringing it down, running at the defense. Um, I thought Foden wasn't quite as lively as he has been, but I thought that was testament to Palace. I thought Tyreek Mitchell uh, and, and and Nathaniel Klein were, were were pushing high on both of our players when they got the ball. I thought Grealish had a bit more. Joy on the left-hand side against Klein. I think Klein stood off him a bit, so Grealish would come inside. But I think Foden, as soon as Foden received the ball, Mitchell was right up his ass, and uh, Phil had to either turn it inside or, or knock it back. Um, midfield, Rodri. Now, just let me have a cup of tea here. Just let me, it's me, me annual brew. You know you know what it's like. You watch these streams, I like to have a brew. But I need to clean my palate when I'm talking about Rodri. You know what I mean? When You need to talk about this, this guy. You know what I mean? 
there's a lot of people out there talking about other defensive midfielders in this league, yeah. Thomas Partey, good player, turned up this season. Um, Casimiro, world-class player. We know what he's about, Real Madrid. He's doing okay. But then there's Rodri. Now, if Rodri plays for any other team, he's getting these plaudits. Because he plays for Manchester City, no, nobody's really talking about it. But let me talk about it. There's no better DM in Europe now than Rodri. Rodri is a monster. At Crystal Palace the other day, he was driving with a ball. He was dropping deep. He was putting tackles in. He was spraying it left. He was spraying it right. The energy in him was unbelievable. And he's a unit. He's a fucking unit. You've seen the size of him. He's a unit. And he's putting himself about in there like I've never seen. And I thought it was one of his best games. You know what I mean? Tough place at Palace. Some players they shrink a little bit there and don't really want to get involved. But no, 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 no. Rodri was on it. From the minute we kicked off, he was on it. I don't think he misplaced a pass. You know what I mean? And if he did misplace a pass, he went running back and got it back. But this is a regular for Man City fans. We know what Rodri's about. We know how important he is, you know. And if we're going to win this league now and go on these runs, this is these are the players that need to step up. Talked about Ruben Diaz stepping up. Talked about Rodri stepping up. Foden coming back into it. Haaland, Grealish. This is the direction we all need to be pulling now. You know what I mean? The fans, again, unbelievable. Non-stop getting behind the lads. Amazing away end. Sounded fantastic on the TV. Usual standard Man City away practice, isn't it? People like to talk the talk and talk shit about Man City fans, you know, but really they're just following with what fucking Big Dave said down the road in the boozer. But let me tell you, there's no better fans on the road than us at the minute. We're on it. The uh, 18 to 25 idea, the ballot has worked for me. You know, a few old school blues were a bit against it at first, thinking... You know, why should these young kids get the points when these guys, other guys have done hard, you know, journeys and got the points and all that stuff? I get that. I do get that, you know, but it's been a good positive thing. There's a good hardcore now of young up and coming City fans that are getting that, you know, crowd going. The older generation have been there. They've done that. They've got the T-shirt. When when City are, are, are doing mad things, we just sort of relax the, the, the young guns get get the get the crowd going again. I'm all for it. But yeah, it was good to to listen to the to the Blue Army on the TV. And listen, first half, it was a lot of huffing and puffing. Um there's a great chance by Big Earl. The cross comes in, Erling gets in front of his marker. If you watch it on the replay, it just takes a little bubble and he and he flicks it over the bar. If Erling scores that and it's one nil, you're going in at half time winning and it's a perfect first half performance. But we goes in at nil-nil and, you know, you start to not shit yourself, but you start to think, fucking hell, is it going to be one of them days at Palace? At least we've got to get something, you know what I mean? Got to get something. Um, there was a lot of calls at our time, maybe Kevin De Bruyne coming on, but he, he resisted that change. Uh, we went out second half, pretty much of the muchness, really. Do you know what I mean? Huffing and puffing again. And then we finally got the break. Quick thinking by Gundogan. Gets in the box for the early corner. Um, too quick in the mind for Elise. Um, he takes him out to penalty. Stonewall penalty. 100%. At the end of the day, Palace were digging deep. They were, they were, they were wasting time. They were, they were trying to catch us on that break. It wasn't working. And, you know, we outfought them there. We outfoxed them, shall we say. Gundogan there. He's an old school guy. He's fucking experienced. He won that penalty mint. And there's only one man. There's only one man who needs to be anywhere near them penalties. Yeah. I know people like Riyad. But Riyad gives me nightmares on penalties. So Riyad, ever since Anfield away, you know, back in the day when your penalty fucking blasted through the roof and went to Mars, I'm, I'm very sceptical about you taking penalties. I'm glad he went on the pitch for it. But Erling, Brout Haaland, the man of the moment, he loves these moments. Grabs the ball, puts it down, smash, it's in. And look at the celebrations. You've seen what it meant to him, yeah? He's a young kid. He's got 28 goals, 29 goals, whatever it is in the Premier League in his first season. He's a City fan. We're in a title race with Arsenal. He's loving life. He's loving life. And these games out there, 
as a Man City fan throughout the years where it ain't pretty, but you've just got to get the result. And that was the game for us. Get the result, yeah, when it mattered. Crystal Palace away, 1-0, off someone's ass, and ball, bobble it in the net, whatever it takes, just come away from Sellers Park with the three points. And we did that. It was good to see uh, De Bruyne get on near the end. Um, I think he's going to be uh, a key moment, a key man, sorry, in uh, the game tomorrow, which we'll touch on in a second. But listen, we've seen out the win. We never really looked troubled. You know, I know 1-0, looking at it from afar, just looks like you scraped it. But on another day, it's three or four. But I'm not bothered about that. we just got to get the job done. And that's what we did. The Blues went down there. They sung their hearts out. The team played their hearts out. We got the victory. Get on the coach and get the fuck out of there rapid. And that's what we did. Yeah? And we're still in this title race. We're still in the title race. Arsenal are there to be caught. That is what we do. Yeah? I don't know if a few people have seen it on social media this week, but I do a show on the terrace with Terry. And he likes to clip things, Terry, to get reactions and clickbait and all that nonsense. Right, well, okay, that's fine. And he clips a little section of me talking about the Arsenal fans. Now, I've got a good relationship with Arsenal fans because I told Arsenal fans to calm down, relax with Arteta and all that. Anyone who watches the Big Six show knows that. But the thing is with the Arsenal fans at the minute, they're a little bit precious because I can spend 50, 60 minutes talking about how good Arsenal are, how good Odegaard is, Partey, Gabriel, Zinchenko, giving them all the flowers that they deserve. And as soon as I say something that they don't quite like, they're on me. But they're not the real Arsenal fans. I know the real Arsenal fans, the football people know what I'm saying. I'm backing my team in the title race, rightly so. They're backing their team in the title race, rightly so. The virgins in the bedroom just see Big Steve saying something negative about Arsenal and they come out of the woodwork with the negativity and the bile and the hatred and the name calling and all that. It is what it is, laughable. But all I'm saying is, we're in this title race with a very, very good Arsenal team who are doing unbelievable things, yeah? But I believe in my team. I believe in this badge. I believe in the fans, the club and everything and Pep Guardiola to get it right. So, excuse me if I go on a show and big up my team in a title race who've won four out of the last five titles. How dare somebody do that because... Arsenal in a title race. Am I not allowed to do that? Well, I'm sorry. I'm going to keep doing it till the end of the season. And like I've said, the best team will win the league. Simple. I can't control it. You can't control it. The only people that can control it are then players on the pitch. And this is the time now we're coming into that last 10 games, which I've said from 18, 19 games ago. Forget what's going on now. Keep hold of the coattails till the last 10 games. And we've got a chance. And we're in the mix. We're in the mix. We've got Liverpool coming up. Next game. Tough game. Just done Man United for seven and get beat off Bournemouth. Weird. We don't know what Liverpool's going to turn up. Always a tough game at the Etihad against them. I hope it's the Bournemouth Liverpool that turn up. But knowing my luck, it'll be the, the 7-0 one that turns up. But it is what it is. We've just got to ride it. We're good enough to beat Liverpool. I think we will beat Liverpool. But... It's going to start coming thick and fast, Blues. The pressure's going to start mounting. We've been here before. We know what to do. So all I'm saying to the City fans is let's just relax. You know, they didn't like the shark coming. When I said there was blood in the water and there's a big blue shark coming, didn't, they didn't like that because I think there's a few of them, not the genuine ones, not the match-going ones. They, they, they know they're on a good run. They know they've got a good, time, uh, good side. And they know Man City's got a good side. So there, message me every day, Steve, it's going to be a great title race. I appreciate that. It's the little dickheads and the bellends that don't go to the game. They sit on social media and all that, going on the football terrace and all that, which is a mad, mad comment section on there. They're the ones that are getting rattled. Apparently, I'm salty and I'm rattled. But the comment section, 1,100 and some comments last time I looked, is all Arsenal fans giving me grief. So come on. There's only one fan base, not all of them. We're only one section of a fan base who's worried about the shark, isn't it? Baby shark. And it's you lot, not me.
because I'm sat here now, just been a bar, so got a bit of a tan, yeah, drinking some PG tips. Looking forward to the Champions League game tomorrow. Not a Europa League game, the Champions League game tomorrow, which brings me on nicely to tomorrow's game. Manchester City versus Leipzig. 1-1 from the game in Germany the other week. Taylor two halves. First half, Man City, mustard. Second half, all over the show. Very good side, Leipzig. Don't care what anyone says, they're a good side. Got good players, good full-backs, uh, a lot of pace. But we got to put them away. And that's where us as fans come into it. Pep's mentioned it in the press conference. He said, the fans are going to get on it tomorrow. We need our supporters in the stadium. We need that South Stand rocking tomorrow. Every single one of you is going. It's a sellout. Been trying to get tickets for the kids for weeks. Can't get them. Everyone that's going, don't just turn up tomorrow in that South Stand and stand there and watch the other boys sing. Yeah? Make sure you're singing. Get behind the boys. If you feel the crowd go flat, get a chant going. Let's get behind the lads tomorrow. Champions League quarterfinal at stake. Let's get Red Bull Leipzig beat. You know what I mean? Let's get them done. Let's get through to that quarterfinal. You know we want it. We want it. We've got to do it. I do think tomorrow he's going to change the team. I do think you might see Laporte come in. I do think you might see Riyad come in. Maybe Alvarez might come in. Depends how he wants to play it. But I think the fans are going to be important tomorrow. I do. I'm so looking forward to it. I landed back a few hours ago. I've done this today, uh, get the content out there. But I'm so excited for the game, Champions League. I was over in Leipzig and, you know, it was disappointing when you when you come away with a draw. A lot of the fans, it was like a loss. But listen, they're no mugs. Look at them in their own league. That stadium in there is a bit of a fortress. We went there, we got a point. We're taking them back to the Etihad, which is our own fortress. They're not going to fancy it, Leipzig coming there. And they've got to open up. They've got to come and attack us and try and get a result, which plays into our hands. So I do believe that we get the result tomorrow. I think we get the job done. Do I think we're going to have some mad nervy moments? Yeah, I do. Champions League's always like that. You just never know what's going to happen. But we've got to be switched on. We've got to be doing what we're doing. Don't tinker with the side too much, Pep. We're starting to see Erling getting more chances. We're starting to see him coming deep. Laying the ball off, doing little things. He's improving. Anyone that's watched Erling Haaland from the first game of the season, like myself, to now, you can see the improvement in him. You know, we forget because of all the goals he scored. It's his first season. People were saying he was going to flop. There were people out there saying he wouldn't get 12 goals. Well, look what he's doing. But that also triggered other teams. They're watching him now. He's up front on his own. Sometimes it's against three or four in a back line and he's trying to make them runs but they're following him it's getting tough it's getting tough for him out there but he knows that all this nonsense today oh he might be going PSG bollocks he might be going Real Madrid bollocks he's Man City through and through look at the kids celebrate he loves it he's got that relationship with the fans man we're on him and like I say we've just got to do this job it'd be a typical City you know to go and win that Champions League this year when nobody expects it because we've had better sides than this in the last three or four years. We have. Last season was a big kick in the teeth. And I thought we had a fantastic team last season. And this season, we've got a good side. But we've said all season, there's something not quite there, something not quite missing. But we like Man City to go and blow this Champions League away. You know, he wouldn't rule it out. But it's exciting. Exciting times. Crystal Palace, Sellers Park, three points, big girls on the score sheet. Ta-da, we're on the bus, we're off with a free. Tomorrow, RB Leipzig at home, South Stand, blow the fucking roof off it, yeah? Let's all get behind them. Don't want to see anyone coming out of that South Stand tomorrow who hasn't got a sore throat, yeah? Get behind the boys tomorrow. This is what it's about. This is what we want, yeah? Big, big game, big game. And then if it doesn't end there, there's an even bigger game for the Blues on Saturday when the captain... El Capitano. Here's to you, Vincent Company. City loves you more than you will know. Whoa. He's going to get some reception, man. He's going to get some reception. I know Burnley's bringing a firm 
nearly 8,000. But I tell you what, to see the captain, again, it's making me emotional now. I look, the airs are standing up on me. Look, look at them standing up because I'm thinking about him. The captain is a leader. He's our leader. Yeah, he's doing a good job for Burnley, but he's ours. And he knows that. But no, it'd be great to see him. I'm going to do a Burnley preview this week. I am. And I know there's a lot of Blues looking forward to, to welcoming him back. But I tell you what, Vinny, if you turn us over, that fucking statue is getting sawn down, yeah, by a couple of scallies from Newton Eve, and we're going to turf it in the canal. Yeah? So be careful. No, I'm only joking. But listen, Blues, it's a quick preview, 20 minutes. Just got off my flight, keeping me at in. Um, please like, share, subscribe. Um, I'm not on Facebook. There's a lot of Man City groups on Facebook. If you can share my videos in there, get other Blues watching it and that, uh, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, listen, thanks again for the support. Um, can't wait to see everybody tomorrow at the Leipzig game. And we just keep on rolling. We're still in the title race. We're still in the Champions League. We're still in the FA Cup. You know, it's looking good for the Blues. So come on, City. Leave your comments below what the score prediction for tomorrow, Leipzig. I'll try and get and reply to everyone later on. And uh, yeah, thanks again for the support. Up the Blues. See you tomorrow. Come on, City.